Is Mike on? Yes? Okay. Yes. Tonight is Tuesday, January 31st, and this is the third and final uh, Board of Selectmen, Board of Finance joint meeting to consider the operating budget for the various town departments. Um, on a snowy, slippery evening, we have uh, Warren Connors taking time out of his busy day to be with us. And Warren, uh, let's start with uh, 1310, which is Public Works, and I mean, looking it over, uh, highlights, I mean, we're not worrying about salaries, those have been explained to us. I guess the big thing here is uh, rentals, equipment rentals, why don't you? That, that is the, probably the most significant uh, line change, and it has largely to do with the request uh, for some, an increase for tree work. Um, as most of the, the township is aware, ash trees in town are problematic. And um, this year we've been very aggressive addressing them. Um, but it seems like, you know, as fast as we d detect them or get reported about them, we're taking it down. In fact, I'm spending over budget, you know, using other portions of that line this year to address tree work um, because just the, the, the amount of it. And I would say that of the list that I had s starting out the year, um, figuratively, let's say about 300 trees. We've we've gone through the budget expense, and I probably have at least a third or better of that list remaining, unaddressed. And just today, we probably had three residents call pertaining to ash trees. Some of them were already inventoried to be addressed, but we would be on a road taking a cluster of trees down at the beginning of the year, and maybe there was an ash tree there that didn't need attention. Six months goes by, and then all of a sudden you're finding out that the tree that you didn't take down while you were there is now in need of being removed. So that's how aggressive uh, it is. And, you know, once it's detected, every tree is a little bit different, but the risk is that the crown of the tree starts to fall, and when that happens, it's a rapid degradation, and then you're left with just the trunk. The trunk will stand for a while, but ultimately what happens is the tree just collapses on itself. So there's no set time period to address them. Um, some of the areas that we've been working on is North Pease Road be behind the high school and on Peck Hill this year. You know, quite a few trees all success, successfully going down the road. And so we're working in clusters, um, but we have a lot of roads in town that have this problem. Not all roads, but we have the problem. So we're trying to take, let's say, the higher risk areas and, and address those as our priorities. Um, but I, I can see based on information coming forward because it's not right now there's another tree that might be affected right now it's not impacted because there's a problem with oak trees in New York State but we may have that problem migrate to, to Connecticut so not so much in anticipation of other diseases but the ash tree right now is our biggest problem um, maple trees are declining for uh, could be partially old age it could be partially because of winters where you're putting salt down in the road and the um, agricultural experiment station is doing soil samples along roadways and they're finding that it is having an impact on vegetation directly off the roadside. So the request is there knowing that how we can manage the vegetation and we still have you know, essentially six months left out of the current fiscal year in anticipation going into next fiscal year is I'm upping the request, figuring we're going to be doing more. Warren, what is the um, limit from the street? In other words, what part mm. is the town responsible? Maybe for the television audience, what's the town responsible it, it for? It varies, especially on the older homeowner? roads. Rule of thumb, I, I'd like to tell residents 10 feet from the edge of the road. Okay. But some of the older roads where they were put in, the right-of-way is still the same, but the road could be skewed mm. all the way over to one side of the 50-foot right-of-way. So you might have one property that's got 40 foot of frontage from the edge of the road and another one that's got nothing. Mm -hmm. So it, it all depends on where the road was aligned. Newer roads, it's very balanced. It's all engineered, it's layout with a symmetrical shoulder. And usually that's 13 feet from the edge of the road. So when it comes in and I get notice, I look up every property to the best of my ability to find out. It's not a hard survey, but it gives, gives us enough of a capability to go out and judge where the tree is located. No, I missed it by that much, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> trees. Well, That's I okay. have a lot of trees I understand. where 
a lot of trees yeah, that's I it you go out and measure right. and, and yeah. the tape measure from the edge of the road by the scale system that we use it hits the face of the trunk but the tree is growing just over that parameter <clears throat> now we try to address if it's canted towards the road ultimately that's going to be our problem so we almost have to address that tree if it's going to lean and come towards the road what was Thanks. the budget last I went from a forty thousand to a sixty thousand request, or fifty thousand to uh, sixty thousand. We, we upped it. I know it was sixty thousand was the allotment for this past fiscal year, but we've been spending because I go to Tony and I say, Tony, can we tra transfer money at the end of the budget year? We try to take any residual funds, and if there's capability to come before the boards and move money from one line to the other to address tree work, that's what I've been doing for quite a few years. Okay. So you're asking for a forty thousand dollar increase then over in last year, work, yes. Over over this current year. And we all have in front of us a letter from our dear friend Michael Luther. And Michael is I'm sure he's talked to you about it, but Michael is addressing the same issue with ash trees and uh, falling down on Northwood Road and one falls into another into another. So uh, I just want to acknowledge that. We certainly all know Michael. And Northrop Road is one of those roads that's heavily inundated with that species of tree. And I would say probably over the last three years, I've probably taken 120, 140 trees off of that road. Really? Wow. That's and it's, it, I mean, it's so dense along our roadsides. Mm -hmm. And some of them, they're on, a, like there's the end near Ford Road, it's a town right away. So the end of Ford Road and the end of Northrop, it's heavily congested. And they're, they're not all ash trees. We took down a giant oak on, on that uh, road. And, and at the end of Westwood Road, I think it was a couple of years ago, the state took one down at the end of Westwood Road. And it was an enormous tree. Okay. <clears throat> could, could you explain more on what has happened with the director and then for, there have been some personnel shifting around? Yes. Um, there's kind of been, uh, if you will, a pyramidal shift or realignment of the department. Okay. Um, the responsibilities, um, the oversight, basically is is taking in some of the other departments di directly under my jurisdiction. <coughs> okay. um, and and then we we've sh um, shortened up the workforce to take responsibilities to work with less people. And get the same job done. <clears throat> so that's, in, in short, that's what we've done. We're taking on responsibilities to tr try to do the best we can and with limited resources and still accomplish the same okay. work so at the end of the year. So what is under your purview <clears throat> now as director of public works? Well, it's always been the the um, uh, public works waste management mm -hmm. side of things. Mm -hmm. Now parks, building maintenance, th those are nuances they're still the basic role of the department is still the same correct <clears throat> we're, we're letting building maintenance the people because even the drivers they go out to, on a night like tonight they don't need supervision directly so it's more oversight mm -hmm. but what's happened over a lot of the years from the administrative side is there's things that couldn't be done because I was directly participating myself in the activities of the department. Mm -hmm. And so as, as a result of that, some of the things that needed to be accomplished went a little bit to the wayside. And now we're trying to play catch up on that. Um, some of the things would be uh, what OSHA might consider responsibilities of training um, because everybody's been dispersed. Mm -hmm. So there sure. was not a, a, a coordinated effort. Yeah. Um, some of the personal personal protection things that we, we had to acquire. Um, you know, the yeah. guy wouldn't say that he doesn't have this Just piece. Just some guidance uh, <coughs> there, the um, Parks Department and the Maintenance Department, which were formerly not under Warren's jurisdiction, mm -hmm. are now under Warren's jurisdiction. And instead of having Parks Director, we have a um, now we have a, um, a working uh, foreman who is in charge of all the departments. So essentially, what has happened is the parks director position has been eliminated, and the parks director is now the foreman. Right, and so that was that's Brad. Adam. Adam. Yes. Adam. Yeah. So, so Adam is now the foreman. <laughs> so now instead of you know Adam, instead of having Adam in charge just of parks, he's in charge of parks maintenance and um, the crew. 
Uh, so, Sandy, okay. what might be helpful is a few months ago, the personnel committee addressed this, and then the board of selectmen, and we approved it. And Tony made a great chart of the new restructuring. I can, I can send you that. Uh, oh, which that is really good. Sure, yeah. I think maybe Thank the board you. of finance yep. should like that, that out. Sure. Which yep. all the work we do. Okay, that would be yeah. that would be nice. Sorry, I didn't have. I just looked for it. I don't have it. Yeah. <laughs> I can cool. do that. <laughs> I mean, we noticed all these lines shifting, it, and we just at least years ago the okay. there was essentially almost back to where it is now, okay. but we didn't have the responsibilities of all the departments the way we do today. Sure. So basically, there was a little segregation of responsibility, and now both for for my benefit to take care of the administrative things <coughs> and reporting to Tony in a better fashion, and I think to address the community makes better, it makes more yeah. sense okay. to do what That's we're terrific. doing. So you have to look at if you look at parks, there's a 15 percent reduction in there. So. The, the, the increase in public works isn't necessarily correct. The increase we're looking at, right? Right. So, are there any other questions on this? Well, the rentals. I'm assuming this is basically going back to the uh, sweeper. The sweeper. We opened a bid, and we're we're actually reviewing the uh, the bidder's information right now, and I'll be getting back to Tony with a recommendation uh, probably by the end of the week. And then there's a turnaround time, you know, to acquire it. Probably conservatively, let's say 120 days or so before we can actually take possession. You know, but that's and again from the operating, that part of it has been removed from the operating. <coughs> Anything else? Okay, let's move on to waste management. Put your on the transfer station. Um, the biggest changes here is the, the um, um, we have contractual obligations. Um, we're in the third year of a contract for the firm that does all our hauling of the containers from the transfer station. And the, the fee increases are built, estimated into this, this budget. And, and that's the, the, the biggest, let's say, monetary impact. And it's not a big reflection of things, but it is representing an increase. What's your assessment of how well things are going? In general or at the transfer um, station? At the transfer station. <clears throat> Very good. And, and we're pushing to try to get uh, more emphasis on the recycling. Uh -huh. um, I, th I think we're noticing a, a, a marginal shift. And uh, with uh, Kelly, our new office manager, she's focusing on a lot more things working through with the state programs and things to try to increase that more, more items can be recycled and what programs mm -hmm. we can implement mm -hmm. uh, to benefit everybody. It, it's uh, uh, from the stormwater side, from, from just the, the programs that might be uh, mm -hmm. out there and available that weren't there before. Okay. Um, so, so she's working very closely. She, there's, uh, she's involved with the regional water authority with the, the hazard disposal uh, things. She goes to meetings down there, uh, representing the town. Uh, she's very familiar with the programs. Mm -hmm. She's involved with the um, um, procurement of um, more recycling assistance, whether it be. Uh, townwide, statewide, you know, nationwide. It, it's there's there's associations out there that focus on improving recycling. So that's that's our focus to do it. And and I think statistically we're seeing the benefit uh, of having you know the recycling program. Okay, it just didn't seem that there was much change in terms of volume. That this increase is really just really <coughs> the to volumes the fees. almost if. If you're not taking out the general waste, you're taking out recyclables. Mm -hmm. So you still have hauls. And, 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 and short summation, it'd be a container of each on a daily basis. Okay. Thank you. At, at some point, I remember, Warren, we, we weren't hitting our tonnage that we're paying for. Early so we, on. Are, are we, we're hit, we're Early, there now? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. <clears throat> I and I don't think, it. Tony, you can probably correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think we get penalized. There's no, we know, more there's no penalty anymore. There's, there's, oh, okay. no, there's okay. no arrangement. There's oh, no penalty okay. for tonnage uh, redu uh, okay, okay. reductions. Yeah. And not that I go there a lot, but I'll tell you, it is a well-run operation. And the mm -hmm. guys there are very helpful. And it's uh, spotless. Yes. It it's is a, it's spotless. a wonderful, it's it a wonderful. They do a great job. And I've been to a few others I mean, in my travels with my kids and whatever, I'll tell you. 
it's it's the best I've ever seen. Not that I've been to that many, but I've been to three or four. <laughs> I've been to three or four, really. And you, and you drive up, and it's Absolutely. like I said, for the size of the community. If, if you're, I've seen I've seen people struggling to take stuff out. Your guys come right there. And oh yeah, help, help them you. unload oh, yeah. the stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, no, they, do, they do a great job. And we also do a lot more in this town that other communities don't. Yeah. We recycle paint, we, the electronics yes. that we recycle. Yeah, so we're a little bit ahead of the curve in that regard. My more, personal favorite more is the oil. paper shredding. Are we coming back with the paper shredding? Annually. When, and it was annual. annual. Yes. Oh, I love the paper shredding. <laughs> and if you miss that, you can come to my office. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't come in two or three okay, times. Any other questions on waste management? Well, remediation is the best news we've seen. It's gone. Can we have a toast? Yes. <laughs> remediation, for those yeah. in the audience, yeah. is a zero budget. Yeah. It's obviously been steadily decreasing over the years since we had the, the big gas bill. And yeah. That was way back when uh, Roger, was Roger selected, Harrison right? was first yeah. elected. Wow. So the, the budget is official. So no testing at all. Yeah. We're clean. Okay, good. Fantastic. All right. And Warren tells me that the, the, the new public works facility is a just a fabulous, the guys love it, trucks love it. It's a, it's a, everything we hoped for. It's and, a great uh, facility. Yeah, and even our new office manager can't believe how, what a great yes. facility it is. Okay, any other questions for Warren? All right, Warren, Thanks for a great job. after, okay. after today, Warren, keep right. the snow. Thank you. Yeah. No you know, snow. we've been doing good, I'm not arguing. No more snow. <laughs> All righty. And next is the fire department. Sean Rowland is here. 1230. Hi. Good evening. Sean, why don't you, rather than going line by line, what we've been doing, we, we know about salary increases. You know, okay. You just want to highlight anything that you feel is should be highlighted. Sure. During... Um, after we submitted, we were able to get some numbers back on some things, and um, we're able to make some cuts. So I'd like to go through those also. Sure. So one of the things, the one is volunteer incentives. We're looking for a ten thousand dollar increase. We'd like to keep it the same, the seventy, um, and the reason being that we're looking to increase it, probably for not next year, the following year, would be is we have. Um, actually an increase in members so as we go through some of these lines we're going to see why the line item went up we have um, just a uh, we have 11 new members and we have three new applications on the table so it's it's actually a really good thing as we go through so we like to keep the volunteer incentives at 70 this year so it would show a zero percent increase on that line sure as long as you're on the sure I, I spoke to you about this that I wanted to discuss this with you. Okay. Um, explain to us, I know I've got some of the stuff here. You have to make so many calls, you have to make so many of this. But what happens, the question I have for you, what happens when someone is no longer active in the department? They, they're older, they retire. I'm not gonna go through the names and all that. But. Right, we have, a, uh, we have a retired status, but they have minimums they have to hit. So it's, you, it's anybody after 25 years of service, um, you could either remain active or you go more into like a retired status where you can't actually uh, do firefighting operations anymore, but they can still come, they can dispatch, they could do other things around the firehouse, and they have a reduction on their minimum. So right now to be eligible, you have to have 20% of fire calls, 50% of meetings, 50% of truck crews, 50% of training. With the retired status, basically all those numbers are cut in half, but they have to hit minimums to be eligible for the program. So what happens? So what happens if a, if a guy just can't do it anymore? He's whatever. He doesn't come at all. It ends. If he doesn't come at all, he can't. Yeah. He can't. If he if he doesn't come at all, then he's not eligible. So it stops. You correct. Okay. Because what I said to Sean when I talked to him is. It, it seems, I mean, looking at it, I know most of these guys, maybe the younger guys who are just getting started are, you know, not, not getting that much. So it's something, I just mentioned it's something you should look at. If it's going to be an incentive. It's, you know, it's really, it's, it's actually the wrong word. It's not an word, incentive. Yeah. It's yeah. more of a, more of um, like a retirement. Most volunteer departments have that. It's more of a, like a retirement, like an annuity we're in right now. It's really not a incentive. 
uh, tax abatement program would be more of an incentive than a. Um, yeah, you should uh, change it. Yeah, we should change the, the I don't know wording on that line. Either, it's not even retire. I, I don't know what we would call it. Think about it. Well, it's yeah. An, it's an incentive. Well, it is an incentive, what? but yeah, it's. Exactly. Well, it's an incentive. Yeah, you're getting an incentive at the end of the year for as long as you make all your minimums. Performance incentive? Or incentive to right. stay or an incentive to go? To stay. To stay. Uh -huh. Okay. To stay. To stay. Yeah. Well, that was a clear. Uh, yes. For Sorry. It's a retention. <laughs> so you want to retain people. Yeah. So it's to encourage retention. Correct. correct. From so that retiree status, if they produce 50%, the, the idea is to keep them in the training. So they have to do 50% of the training that any active member does. 50% of the in the, in the active status. Right. Yes. So the, so the, it also helps them to the incentive to keep up with the training. Absolutely. The, so like we have a we had a heavy department up until last year so our members were I mean you're talking 40, 50 and 60 years. So that's where our, our membership was and we have we had a group mm -hmm. of 30 30 30 to 40. We were lagging the 18 to 30. Right now, we have a lot of new guys that are in that 18 to 30 range, which is actually good because that's really the bulwark of it right there. So, and as you get up in age, usually we, we move. Be careful. <laughs> we move them from active firefighters to actual drivers, pump operators. So it doesn't take, you're not wearing an air pack, you're not wearing 60 pounds of gear, you're hooking up the truck and pumping, and it's still, you're still really active, you're just not getting the, uh, the brunt of it. I ask this every year. Do we have any female volunteers? No, not yet. Okay. We had one time we had five, so it's oh, weird. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Um, repair and maintenance machine. That's everything's going to stay the same there. Repair and maintenance vehicle. We'd like to take that down a thousand dollars to twenty nine thousand. We uh, we got some new numbers in for the testing for next year, and they're not as high as we anticipated. So. We can cut a thousand dollars there. Um, let's see. The other highlights. Uh, communication cellular. Every single year for the last however many years, we always run over and we always come back uh, looking to fund it uh, either out of contingency or out of our budget and do line item transfers. But that line is really that's r where it really is. It's not. Um, we're not increasing it. It's always going to be really around that 12.5 number. Um, if I'm going too fast, let me know. Programs and publicity on the on the next page of mine. Uh, it was at 9,000. We could cut that down to 4,500 this year. That's the coloring books and the little red firing hats. That's all the fire prevention stuff. We have inventory this year, so. We believe we have enough to get through next year, and then that line would probably go back up the following year. But we're not going to need all nine thousand next year, so we're looking to cut that line in half. Uh, computer. This was a line that was zeroed out last year, um, but we have spent money, and Tony actually uh, moved. Uh, we have money put in back into that account. We believe we need uh, eight thousand this year. We put in our request for eleven. But I think we can get through this year with only eight. So it's a reduction of 3,000. Um, gear replacement is 30. It went up 4,000 just because we have a bunch of new recruits and we need to outfit them with gear. Just to put it in perspective, what happens is, is we usually take the guys that are already active firefighters and we usually take their gear and move it down to the probationary people to go through fire one and they hold that gear until they graduate and then we purchase some gear that uh, really fits. It's more of an OSHA and a PA required that every, all the gear has to be custom tailored um, to that individual. It can't be too big, can't be too baggy. It's got to fit that individual. So we have a, a bunch of new guys into that category. Um, technical, yeah. The other one is hydrants. We showed an increase this year. And this is the hardest line to really figure for. Um, we showed an increase of roughly a little over 3,000. We got that number from our uh, regional water, but we, we're not sure of that number. They can't give us a number. There's gonna be an increase of January of 18, which is gonna fall into this budget, but we have no idea what it is. 
the last four or five years, the increase has been seven and like three eighths percent. So if we followed that number, that number is going to be pretty much right. If we don't, we can leave that number at the 84, 468. That, what that number is, is all the hydrants in town. We pay for all the water lines in town, um, all the feet of water pipe in town. We pay for the fire department connections, the fire service connections on this building, on public works, on the library, on the center building, on the firehouse, on Beecher School, all the town buildings. That would come, that comes out of our budget. That's what that line basically does. My recollection is you have more than 130 hydrants. We do. We have, uh, I think, 137. Okay. If a new hydrant is added, I'm sorry to interrupt you. If a new hydrant is added, what is the cost for that? Ballpark? So, like, there's a new hydrant possibly words, being water line gets right. So, if the street. water line down at the uh, animal shelter, kind not to talk about. The animal shelter is extended. It's probably going to cost us a couple hundred dollars every year to pay for the water pipe in the ground, mm -hmm. and then the maintenance on the hydrant. Mm -hmm. So speaking of hydrants, when you had the fire at the JCCC, was there a problem with the hydrants? Didn't you have a problem? There, with was, there was a there is an issue with the hydrants on on that building. What happens is um, when the sprinkler system goes off, it, it, there's a pump inside, and it pumps to the sprinkler system, and then we come in and we hit that hydrant down by the loading dock and we pump into the building. Well, by doing that, the hydrant up top has no water. No water comes out. So we had to get a drag another line from Bond Road, across Amity Road, and bring it up the hill to feed the fight the fire uh, inside the building. So that's expected then if the, if the sprinkler goes off? It wasn't expected. We didn't oh. know about it until that night oh, when we had repaired? no water coming out. It can be repaired? I mean, it, it, there is a solution to fix it. It's again, with the JCC right now. Right. Yes. The other line to go back to um, is, and I skipped over it, is the medical expense line. It was uh, slated for 24. We're expected to spend 28 this year, and we're proposing 29 for next year. The reason being why that line shows such a big increase, one of extra members coming in, and new members' physicals are usually between seven and $800 a piece. But the other thing we used to try to do is we gave we gave a little leniency where if the guys could go a little bit earlier for their physical or if we had to wait on an extra month um, to let them go so we had the money in the budget, what happens is OSHA came in and we have to have a physical current every 365 days at year, uh, day 366. We have to pull their gear and they're out of service until they have a current physical. So that's a big change right there for us. What about this? Because th those of us who follow the business world, uh, if we heard about these EpiPens, EpiPens—that's uh, that's, that's another thing that comes out of that line. The EpiPens are expensive. I want to say we paid seven hundred dollars for a set, each set this year. So that's—I think we we have something like forty-five hundred dollars in EpiPens. What do you what do you need those for? Those are for drug overdoses. No, 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 no. EpiPens are. are in, you're allergy. talking about Narcan, right? right. 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 So we're required by Spencer Hospital to carry Narcan and um, EpiPens. So, so Tony, yes. is that, given the pricing craziness of stuff like that, is there any sort of state... Um, assistance? Not a state assistance. What's the word I'm looking for? Bid. Consortium <coughs> buying or, or where, you can, where you get better deals by the... I haven't seen one on, on EpiPens. Um, but on the other... The other one, Narcan. 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 Yeah. And it, does it help with cost? Narcan is actually not the expensive. It's not that, it's expensive. Not that right. expensive. It's, it's the EpiPens. It's the EpiPens. EpiPens yeah. that yeah. We haven't talked to our state delegation. I haven't seen anything on EpiPens. That's outrageous that yeah. that cost gets yeah. passed along. And they expire so. quickly, they right? They yeah, don't they last that long. I think they last oh, really? either, yeah, that's they're a problem either problem every, every year or every year and a half we have to change them out. There's a new EpiPen out. It's not EpiPen. It's a generic EpiPen. And but the people that have nut allergies and everything, mm -hmm. they want the EpiPen. You, you want the EpiPen because they're not really sure on how the other one is going to perform and everything. Most of the time, if you have a severe allergy, they carry their EpiPen with them, right. and you just assist them. Yeah, but if they're on the floor, you're not going to say, "Excuse me, where's your EpiPen?" Correct. Right? I mean, they're right. not going to say you have the wrong one. And then we have to, say, and we have to make sure it's. The other thing is, we have to make sure it's not expired either. Right. 
So well, it'd be interesting. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm sort of throwing spaghetti at the wall, but it'd be interesting to see if there is any kind of buying power sure. that would be helpful. That would, that would be helpful. Sean, can you explain a little bit about 57410, last line item, the capital machinery? Yes, that's the other one, 57410. What we did is I went back, and we're actually going to be taking out. I had the. Um, on the rescue truck, the light tower, there's six heads on the light tower, and I have two of them out right now, but they're extremely expensive to fix. We think we have a Band-Aid fix for them where we can <coughs> replace the two bulbs in the light tower, so we think we can get through another year. Um, so I'm pretty confident we can take out the 13,000 out, out of that line. The miniature replacement is the same that it's always been. It's for the uh, radios on the guy's hips to get alerted when there's a call. And the thermal imaging camera, uh, I believe you guys uh, heard about it last week or two weeks ago. Uh, the one, we broke one of them at the JCC fire. We had to replace. The other one is a six or seven years old and it's due for replacement probably in the next two years. But it's, it's getting to the point according to the manufacturer where we should really think about replacing it. So what are you Is saying? One or two? We have to replace it or we don't have to replace it? I'm expecting it not to last a so whole other year. Have? Have we have two. So the one that was destroyed, was We've, was that? We, we have, that, that was on we, order. We, okay. it's, on, it's on order yeah. and we have, um, they loaned us a spare since we ordered it. They gave us, so the that company loaned us a spare. Replace. What's that? The one that got destroyed wasn't the one you were planning to replace. No, it's right. the other one. Right. So what should that line be? Did you say there was a reduction if you don't need those lights? 13,000 okay. in that line. Thanks. So that line would bring it back, it would bring it down to 12,304. Okay. Huh? That's about it? That's it. Uh, Okay, any questions? Maybe a few minutes. Good? Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All righty, next comes that horrible board of finance. Only 1170. Sure. No, that's not him, that's us. Oh, that's you? It's not the finance department, it's the board, that's us. Wow. Well, that's what happens when you don't have any labor contracts, right? right? Yeah, right. <laughs> take about three seconds. Wow. Just All those salary increases that you saw, that's yeah. the other half. Right. Yeah. All right. And again, you know, we, we're pretty, we're pretty uh, careful with our contingency fund, so, and it's, 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 it's a, uh, it's a moving target. So hopefully, uh, there's always money left there. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory. So we, we got the award this year, Board of Finance, right? We got the biggest decrease? <laughs> yeah, I think Other than remediation. Yeah, I, I, well, that's not yeah. the biggest, but yours is. Yeah. You had the largest decrease last year. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. You had to have it. All right, benefits, <laughs> 1710. So um, benefits, um, the first the FICA, Medicare, and retirement one numbers, they're all part of that contingency because they're all driven by salaries. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, that was all part of that calculation. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about health insurance. Uh, you'll notice that, um, and there's a conservative estimate on an increase in this, not in this line also, but you'll notice that the uh, general town and the police uh, uh, health insurance lines have gone down somewhat significantly, mm -hmm. while the retiree health insurance line has gone up. So um, I wanted to give you a few numbers here, just give you a scope of, uh, of w what this entails. Uh, under the retiree uh, line, we currently have, uh, there's, it's broken down basically into two groups. There's under 65 and over 65. The over 65, uh, we just pay for the supplemental through Medicare. And uh, the under 65 is for full cost of health insurance. And uh, so over 65, there's 44 members covered. Yeah. And that 44, and that's about $270,000 of that number. The under 65 is 28 members, and it's about 500, over 500,000. So you could mm -hmm. see the difference in the numbers. It was back when healthcare was 
you could be here 10 years and receive health care mm -hmm. when you retired. And there was a number of people that just recently retired who fit into that group, which is why the cost went up so much. Uh, in order to, uh, to control that cost, a while back, um, you had to be here 25 years to get health care. So that significantly reduced the number of people that can, uh, could be eligible for health care, particularly in the police department when we were seeing a lot of turnover. Um, on the staff, there's about 12 people or so, let's see, eight, uh, sorry, 18 people that are still left under the um, old system, but 12 of those are, uh, are at 65 or approximately 65. So there's only a few people left that are um, in the area where there would be a very costly for, for, retire, for, for retirement. Um, we do have 19 people on waiver which is also a good, I think a, lot, a pretty good number, 19 people that take a waiver as opposed to taking our health care. Um, so I, I don't anticipate another large increase to retiree health care uh, like we saw that we see this year. The, um, the other and the last thing is that um, going forward, you probably, most of you know um, that we have, um, uh, if, if you were hired after a certain date, you know, are no longer eligible for health care retirement. So there's f actually five positions in the budget that are not eligible for health care in retirement. So, and that's starting to shift. And that's the norm in municipalities. It's starting to be it's starting to this, be, right? Yeah, it's starting to become the norm. So it's starting to shift. Um, the cost is starting to shift in this. That'll impact the following: the line underneath it, which is OPEB, mm -hmm. at least on the town side. There is, as far as I know, still retiree health care in the Board of Education. That number covers, our uh, OPEB covers both the town and the Board of Education. Could you explain, Tony, how that contribution and the status of OPEB is used sure, the, for the sh retirees? Sh sure. So um, currently the OPEB fund is, if you include, uh, it's about 60% funded. Uh, and and um, if you include the uh, retire health care retiree cost. And basically the idea is to get to a point where the OPEB contribution is the only thing you have for health care for retirees and you fund it similar to a pension where you, you use the interest on the money in the OPEB fund to control costs. And um, you don't have a cash contribution, which is essentially what the 797 is. It's essentially a cash contribution. And so that money is invested each uh, in, in, in overseen by the investment committee. And uh, it's just about $3 million in there. So once it reaches a point where you can start to pay for those costs out of the OPEB fund, at some point you switch over, and then you no longer have the um, cost in your budget for... For OPEB, OPEB. And, and the retiree number Correct. You comes just down correct. Also. Okay. Yeah, the retiree number should disappear, right. and the OPEB contribution should all you have, should right. all the only thing you have. So how many more years do you think we have? Uh, well, we now that we made this point. one change, I say in the next five years it's going to, it'll, the year, I mean, it was, I think, originally 25 years, maybe, it would take to get there. Wow. And, uh, but, but now that we made this change, it should go down significantly. Mm -hmm. I think within 10 years we should see a significant improvement. I mean, when you add up all the retire, <laughs> retiree payments, mm -hmm. I mean, it's over $1.6 million dollars right. a year that we're paying right. for people who Correct. used to work for us but don't work for us right, right now. Mm -hmm. And it's going up. And, you know, that's percentage. that's almost 40% of the benefits budget. Right. Um, it's a lot, which is, a, why we, a, which is why we had to... And the increase oh, the last few yeah. years has been absorbent. I mean, percentage-wise, what the cost right. of the health care for the retirees right. is. We right. had a bunch of... We had uh, 12 so people retire. We're getting rid of those increases. So right. do you, by chance, know if you remove the retiree that, um, benefits, mm -hmm. um, what is the benefit rate for our current employees? What percentage in terms of, is that? of their salary? Yeah. It's um, pro it, it depends I tried, obviously. I tried on to find like a salary total and I sort of a, a, so. a, in total I would have to calculate it. Okay. But if you could, I'd be interested. Sure. I mean, if you take a position, it. police is a lot higher. Sure, I understand. Um, but um, 
I could find that out for you. But but even if you looked at it overall, to yeah, make I could it, do that. To make sure. It simple. It's sure. Just look at our salaries. Yep. What are benefits the benefits? percent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd be happy to remove yeah. retirees without retirees costs. Without retirees. Yeah. Yep. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Any other it's questions? Ten percent of our income. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's really ten percent of our total. Budget. Budget. Yeah. 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 It's a big number. That's why. That's why things are changing. Things. Seriously, it's one of the reasons. Ten we, years, though. He said one ten of the years. reasons municipalities are hurting. <laughs> there are far bigger. These other towns, these larger, they're, they're getting they're getting killed by this. So, um, luckily, we survive it. But there's a lot of cities that are in the hole because of this. So, anything else? Nothing on health care. Thank you. Or whatever employee benefits. Right. Next is um, debt service, which again, there's not much we can say about debt service. And this is, this is really the first year Beecher is hitting Correct. us, right? Yeah, and, and I wanted to just mention that we took a lot of steps to, um, to, to uh, we refinanced a, a few years back and um, we um, did, um, you know, took some steps to uh, avoid a major debt service increase. So really a 5% is not mm -hmm. actually all that bad. No, it's not at all. Yeah. Not yeah. Beecher hitting. Yeah. yeah. Any questions on debt service? No, and the, I mean, the, the chart that you actually prepared is really mm -hmm. helpful. I mean, to kind of keep this up would be terrific in sure. terms of letting us look at sure. at what rate and at what time could mm -hmm. we afford to replace so the debt right. that we have. Right, right, right. Okay. So thank thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. You want to do revenue now, Tony? Do you have anything it's on not that? Really not really much on that. Okay. Um, we haven't got our green list yet, do we? She filed it today, so I'll know tomorrow. Okay. Uh, I'm sure, there's nothing more chattering. It's a, she. Uh, we just talked sort of a little bit about it. There's not much real estate growth. It's because there's not much being oh. built, really. You heard what Terry Gilbert yeah. said about building permits. Yeah. And all that. yeah. yeah sure. So, right, um, board of select. And we're waiting the governor's budget and the process for state revenue. Oh, he said he's got a what? You going up to collect the money, Tony? <laughs> what? <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, you know, that's the next uh, big uh, revenue. All right. 1110, Board of Selectmen. Again, there's a huge jump in uh, administrative and assistant administrative officer. That's so the, this was, um, Ellen wanted to present this this evening. She is unfortunately not here, so I will do it for her. And um, it's basically half of where formerly I had the finance director and administrative officer in one line. Um, it was her desire to split that. Okay. So if you look in finance, uh, you'll notice a big decrease. And okay. it's basically 50-50%. 50% 50, 50, 50 gotcha. in finance, 50% in select. Oh, uh -huh. So to sort of reflect more of the amount of time spent on each. So that's why that goes up. Gotcha. So if you look at finance, you'll see it yeah, reduced. It down. Yeah. yeah. Right. So other than that, then there's that's, nothing. That's really it. That's the nothing in the board select. Right. Yeah. Finance again. We same. got eleven fifty. Same story. Same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Uh, nothing in there. To speak of. Uh, information systems, which is eleven forty-five. We're awaiting the report from the um, committee. I, I, Paul is, of which Paul is a member of. Um, to help with the our IT cost in the budget process, mm -hmm. and I, I, for what I understand, it's in its final draft form. Yeah, that's right. We're planning on presenting to the board of um, selectmen in February. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, um, so that could change some of the figures in the information system and in the other departments involved. Um, what about capital? So are you looking at police and fire? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Police, so fire, board of educate, board of education. Yeah. Board of Ed also. Oh, good. Oh, that's great. That's I didn't exciting. That. Wonderful. I'm riveted. I can't wait. Anything significant on capital on that tone? Yeah. Um, I think. Um, yeah, it's an. That's not next year. It's the year after. Okay. It's, it's so there's nothing for this year. Nothing for this year. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's just and finally, animal control. Twelve fifty. Animal control is our percentage 
of animal control is actually reduced because we added Seymour to the, to the um, district and Derby is no longer with us. And oh, really? Is Derby um, packed in? What's that? Derby packed in? Yeah. Oh, what are they doing? I don't know. Oh. What are they doing? Now? I don't know. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, don't, don't, I don't know either. It's been a while. Too, right? Yeah, it's been uh, this year since uh, first. It came in uh, yeah. in 2013, yeah. I, didn't know that. I think. Yeah, I didn't know it was a difficult. Was it 2013? Yeah. It was, yes. Yeah. 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 Definitely. But Seymour's a much better fit, from what yep. I understand, right? Yep. Less yeah. calls Happy. And Seymour, less we have um, and we have a, a grant uh, that, as you may or may not know, which we're um, reviewing uh, our bids from architect and engineering firms to renovate the facility. And I know there's an active um, donation campaign underway we to hopefully try and match the grants. Match the grant. <coughs> so the grants were 400000 and we're trying to match the grant for an $800,000 mm -hmm. improvement to the facility. And then I think we're in a much better position to possibly have another town. If we build it, they will come. Right. So I think there'll be in a, maybe another town. What's the situation with the water in. there? I know well, that's it's why I asked the question. It's part of the budget for the Yeah, we have to upgrade. put a water line in. Roughly. That was a high question. Are you still using water? Fuji water? Yeah, we are. Uh, our dogs eat drink Perrier. Yeah, <laughs> well, they get, they, they get sick if no, the they drink dogs get sick. Right, whatever. If they, no, you don't want to know about it. They get sick. Well, they I just get the sick. Really with good with with the one fifty, one seventy. If that's the so, we're bringing in. We're bringing in city water to bring the city line. Yeah. Well, we're working on that. Yeah, maybe we're working on that too. Yeah. See if maybe some people on that street might want to tie into it. I, that's well. what we're hoping as well, which will make a difference. Well, it's, it's kind of exciting. So the, the, the budget there is mainly. Um, if you look at the actual expenditures, however, mm -hmm. it, all this increases are basically related to salary as in all the other departments. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? What kind of revenue do we get? It's, a, it's in there somewhere. We get, uh, yeah, it's back on your page. We receive... Uh, 226. It's a revenue sheet Third there. page in. Yeah, okay. So it's about $10,000 in other revenues that we get between uh, fees and donations to the shelter. What do we, we get paid monthly, quarterly? How does that work? By the um, other towns? Yeah. I, I typically um, just bill them once and they pay it. Oh, okay. The, they... Um, we don't have a problem in this department receiving payment from the two towns. <laughs> Enough said, right? That's true. We're not going into that one. Nope. <laughs> All right. I think that's it. And I, uh, Great. Another, another, now the fun begins. We're <laughs> selecting mm -hmm. we'll be meeting, I don't know when. To do well, their right numbers. now it's scheduled, I think, for the 7th. But not yeah. anymore. But not anymore. No. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be rescheduled. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Oh, we have to. Because yeah. their baby decided to come early. So what are you going to do? Yeah. We're, we're, we're defining to be the early March. March 2nd. Yeah, you're the 7th.